Uh, here's another plant of particular interest. Violet. Violet. Both the leaves and the flowers are edible. And guess what? All these violets you see here, I didn't plant a single one of them. So uh, be, be uh, ready to welcome opportunists that might be useful to you. I didn't plant these dandelions either. Most people don't <laughs> because uh, they will come. I just put paper covered by a heavy uh, organic layer to smother that existing sod but without disturbing the, the soil food web. Uh, we could come in and till up everything but it would really set back the uh, soil organisms that we want to be uh, really cranking to help uh, get this ecolo soil ecology really uh, revving and so uh, minimize soil disturbance. That's a basic principle. The key to controlling insect damage is not killing insects. It's, it's forming alliances with uh, species that can help control those insect, insects. And basically it's a strategy of not trying to kill anybody, but maximum diversity. Welcome. Come on. And the more insects, it's, it's counterintuitive, especially as we've been conditioned you know, to think that we need to go out blasting to, to, uh, with, with insecticides to kill problem insects. It's counterintuitive to say the solution is more diversity of insect species. But in fact, that is the case. And so we want to plant to encourage insect diversity. This is bergamot. Um, there's, uh, and we'll see uh, later on. We'll see some other of a group of plants called mountain mints. And uh, they're, they're in the mint family, but they're not like the culinary mints you've seen. They're bigger plants, and uh, when they flower, they encourage insects. So this is just a small example of this concept of the forest garden, bringing more and more diversity of plants that uh, will produce food for the homestead. So, it's, it's, it's going to be a more productive um, garden in the same space. Mm -hmm. So you're not irrigating in any way? This is uh, just natural rain, rainfall? Right. I have, a, unless I'm trying to get uh, maybe a, a cover crop going in here and do some watering then, no, I never water this. But that, that, the mulch and the ground cover, of course, help yeah, uh, retain the, the, the moisture. And of course, Remember this, a garden soil or any kind of uh, soil is going to retain more moisture if you get the organic content up and the humus content. Right. This is for real, folks. Every kind of or organic residue should be seen as a resource, a priceless resource. What we're looking at now is the mushroom operation. <laughs> and I encourage you to uh, think in terms of doing more. You know, we. Uh, typically, when we think of the homestead, uh, most people are going to be working with plants, and a lot of them are going to be working with animals, but we forget that other entire order of beings, the fungi. Uh, really, uh, learn something about the biology of these species. It's really fascinating. They're very different in terms of the way they go about making their living and reproducing their kind. They're very different from either plants or animals. It, it, it's just really fascinating stuff. And when I got excited about this forest garden idea, I started uh, introducing that concept here as well to convert the existing orchard into a uh, considerably more complex and diverse and productive uh, and interesting environment. How long ago? Um, this is the second year of the forest garden and so we've been putting down these uh, mulches and trying to get clovers started as a temporary uh, cover crop rather than grass but with this kind of space it's a you know it, it's <laughs> it's an ongoing process and so there's some areas that are still in grass and there are others that are that have been converted a little bit more in other directions so uh, there are a lot of possibilities for introducing other useful species uh, into the forest garden the forest garden idea can be uh, applied on any scale and here's a little uh, tiny application of the concept. A chestnut tree, or over here, a mulberry tree, 
with comfrey planted at the base. When it gets to be a mature tree, it will provide shade for the birds. In the case of the mulberries, it will provide dropped fruit. In the case of the chestnuts, they will help control the chestnut weevil. And they will also eat the comfrey. So it's another case where, you know, what, what could be just one single entity is, is turned into something more diverse and dynamic. Wonderful poop. So what's this used for? It's this is his compost. compost. Let's the chickens scratch around over here in that picture. And I guess he just moves them. Oh. There's our guinea in shot. Within range for a good picture. Oh, there's one. On the dock. Over on the right, I don't know if you can see him.